we, we are from National Institute for Security Studies, Abuja. We are on the study tour of Ghana. Like I said, we have already undergone some thought within uh, Nigeria. Now we are here to learn about the theme of this course, because every year we pick a theme where we conduct study. This year's theme is the Artificial Intelligence, Security, and Emerging Economies in Africa, Challenges and Prospects. There are other syndicates in other countries of uh, Kenya, Tanzania, and Togo, and Nigeria. Whatever our findings are, when we go on study tour, we bring it back, write our report, and present to our government our findings. We are here in the Ministry of Education this afternoon because Ghana and Nigeria have similar values, similar culture, and even similar challenges, as well as similar educational system. We want to learn from you. What can we benefit from your educational system that we can take back to the country to advise our own government? That is why we are here. Perhaps you share with us mean even the article, how do you apply artificial intelligence in the educational system or the daily activities of the ministry? We want to learn from you. And I hope that we are going to have a fruitful deliberation this afternoon. That's our main purpose of coming here. Thank you. On behalf of the Honorable Minister for Education, I will officially welcome you to Ministry of Education in Ghana. We are most grateful that you pay us this particular visit. Um, the ministry has a good number of agencies under it, and one of them is the Sentinels, and that is the director who will introduce himself, and he is the one who is going to give us a briefing with regard to the artificial intelligence, the challenges, and the prospects. So, Mr. Uh, Nana Egabo, introduce yourself. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Nana Jemfi Egabwo. I am the executive director for Sendlos. And uh, Sendlos is the agency under this very ministry seized with the mandate to infuse ICT into education. We are to look at artificial intelligence, robotics, coding, in this country, especially in the 21st century, fourth industrial revolution. So today I am honored to meet with all of you to present what we have done so far and what we seek to achieve in the future under the leadership of our president and the minister for education. I am humbled to meet with all of you. Thank you. The agency is CENDLO, Center for National Distance Learning and Open Schooling. Uh, my mandate is very simple, to make sure every child, irrespective of location, should have access to education. So I work to improve the SDG4 agenda. That talks about equity, quality, and access. That is the mandate that we do. 20 19 thereabout, we all saw what happened in the world. COVID 19 attacked all of us. It was this same agency that provided platform for us to study. Teachers and students really studied online. And Ghana did not miss anything because we had a device called the iBox. The iBox. The iBox is uh, a device that is locally manufactured here in Ghana. The full name is Intelligent Box System. And we assemble everything here. It's an offline learning management system. So once we deploy that in any part in, the, in, in Ghana, you don't need connectivity. You will leverage on it to study and we put content on it. And the content, the producers of the content are the best teachers in the Ghana. So we will bring them to my center. I have studios, I have TV station, I have radio station. Then the teachers will record the content per what Ghana Education Service and the Ministry and NACA has given. And we reduce it into digital content and we put it on device. Then we deploy it to the remotest part of the country. So for instance, if a child lives in, for instance, maybe uh, 
Ibadan State, and you are in Abuja, we can take the content from Abuja to there through that voice, that, that device, and they can also utilize it in Ibadan State, bringing equity, because the teachers in good school in Abuja is the same people that recorded on the device for us to take it to that state for them to also receive the same education. So there's parity in Ghana through that device we are talking about. We have the software version for the iCampus. But today's vision or the goal for today is to talk about artificial intelligence in education. We know that the world has now gotten into the fourth industrial revolution. At first, we were in the first industrial revolution that talks about steam power, steam power to mechanize boat and other stuff. The second came when Con Edison was sitting somewhere in New York to produce light. Then the third and fourth, electronics, and now we are in the fourth industrial revolution, biotechnology. Mm -hmm. So everything is now artificial intelligence and technology based. Ghana, we have taken heed of that. So in the educational sector, we want to make sure, which we have started, that artificial intelligence is playing a major role in that. And we have selected some key parts of artificial intelligence that we are using, which the first part is generative AI. When we say generative AI, it's very, very, very simple. But the name suggests how it's used. Once you use a generative AI, it's a software, artificial intelligence. What you do as a student or anyone can use the platform, you send anything you want to know in your natural language. For instance, you want to go, go maybe I want to go to Abiyokuta or I want to go to Kumase. You need direction. Once you send it in your natural language, generative AI will prompt you the directions and you can go there. So it generates what you put in and it gives you answers. Then you will go there. That is the world we live in now. And that is really helping. But at first, when it came, we are using it for content production. We are using it for our marketing scheme and personalized learning. When we say personalized learning, what we mean that in Ghana is we have a lot of people when you go to our classrooms now, the brick and mortar, you could see it's a uh, lockdown approach. The same one size fit all, like I'm speaking. It could be a child here who believes that, oh no, my mindset is not up to maybe the mindset of Kujo. Maybe I am a girl and I need time to study, or I'm a boy, I'm handicapped. We need to look at persons with disability. Everybody is different. So you have to use artificial intelligence in the sense that you use what we call personalized learning. So everyone should be studied, analyzed, and see, okay, if you give Akosia two plus two, he will say that she will say the answer. But Kojo will never say the answer. But guess what? If you use this to personalize the learning and Kojo start to catch up, you will see Kojo is actually smart. But the learning style is something that is not supporting Kojo. So we have deployed generative AI in the sense of creating innovative projects and also personalized learning, looking at persons with disability and those other persons to create that inclusivity that we are looking in education in the country, Ghana. Another part of AI is what we call the chat GPT. When it came out, everybody heard about it, yes or no? Please, who doesn't know chat GPT here? Sir, you know about it, right? Everybody knows about that. 2022, it came out. And Ghana, we are using it. But it wasn't easy for us to deploy it because teachers and parents were very, very not ready. They thought that students would now not learn again because everything they put it on tutorial and they get the answers. So they were scared that they would be t uh, stealing, cheating, and other stuff. No more research and other stuff. But guess what? If you understand AI and you understand chat GPT, there is good part in that. Before we deploy anything in Ghana, we do what we call research. I'm sure we all know, but we do deep, deep research. And we do evidence-based data. So once the data comes and we analyze it and it's not going to support, we don't use it. So every solution is backed by data. 
So after we deployed and we saw the data, we realized that if we put measures in place, this new age artificial intelligence is actually going to help the students, but not for them to steal or to cheat. Because when it comes to chat GPT, any answers that gives to you, in, in, immediately you may think the answers are right, but sometimes they are machines. Their answers may not be right. Because for instance, if you program, you say, I am, you will see that the answer that they will give to you home, maybe you are not going to home, you are going to church. So chat DTP has gotten it wrong, yes or no? They have gotten your brains wrong. So if you depend on it alone, you will fail your exams. So this is what we did. We did an analysis to see where the teachers still have the role to play and where we can leverage and count on only technology or artificial intelligence. So those are for marking and other stuff and for teaching, building content, creating projects and other stuff. But when it comes to traditional learning, Ghana does not believe we have to face it out. So we are doing what we call hybrid education. The goodness of this is what we take and still compact it with the traditional studies. So a teacher will still know that my role is very important, even in the artificial intelligence regime. So you don't feel like no teacher is needed again. So research is very good to understand how you will use or deploy the artificial intelligence. The other part is machine learning. When we say machine learning, it's machines learning something. You know what they are learning? The machine is now being deployed to learn human beings, how our brains work. Every brain, every head, you have what we call faculties in your brain. There's a faculty where you have your neurons. The neurons is what you used to think. So now the machine has been able to think and study human beings and learn them to that level that if you say, I am, they know you are going home because they have built what we call algorithms that they have learned you so much. So machine learning too is really helping and we are using that for our students to study even from KGs and other stuff. Because if you don't catch them young now or introduce technology or artificial intelligence, now you are not doing your students or your people good. Because that is where the world is going now. So Ghana, we are taking that part and the kids are now learning programming. They are learning robotics. They are learning coding. Two days ago, I had a workshop in some of the schools. I go out to do practical stuff. I don't be the CEO that sits only in the office. No, I go out to see if it's actually working. You could see the kids, the students, is really understanding. There's a child who is now coding at the age of 10, coding a, a light bulb to automate it. Now he can even employ people based on what we are doing in our classroom, based on what we are doing, especially adding artificial intelligence and the machine learnings and being promoting game-based learning. We are doing what we call the Minecraft education. Minecraft, I'm sure we all know, is in the US. We have brought them in Ghana. And the focus of Minecraft is very simple, to make sure the kids build the four C's in their brains. The four C's is creativity level, collaboration, critical thinking, and good communication skills. So every child, by the time you attain the age of 18, you can speak well, your creative level is high, and you can communicate very well and think of collaboration, partnership. So that is where the focus is. And the Minister of Education, we call him the erudite of education, the grandpapa of education, especially in the 21st century, understands that. So anything that we do, you need leadership support and you need the country to back you up, especially where we are. So once we communicate to him, he sits down and he understands what Ghana needs now and it's moving faster. So anywhere you go, especially what I'm talking, you need what we call leadership support. Everything I'm saying, if you don't get the leadership support and understanding, it's not going to work. So let's take that into consideration. Next. All right, there are some challenges and considerations, as I spoke, and when it comes to artificial intelligence. You can't just deploy it because you want to deploy it. If you don't do the analysis and the research well, what is going to happen is it will widen the gap for you. It will give you issues. Data privacy is another thing. 
Because if you deploy artificial intelligence, now they can deep dive and take your data, siphon it. So you need to look at which part you want to take and how you do your data protecting. So you need to encrypt all your data well so artificial intelligence does not dip into it and take your data. So what we are doing in Ghana is educational ministry. Now we are working with the cyber security authority. So anything we deploy, they also keep an eye on it for us online. Whatever the students are doing, they keep an eye for us. And my person too, I have the cyber security background to so understand how things work. We have three kinds of websites. We have the clear web, we have the dark web, and the deep web. Whatever you do on your phone now, www.bot, or what you are doing on your phone, call the WhatsApp, you are sending message, you are doing it on your clear web. As soon as you delete it and you hand the phone over to me, and you say, produce my content that I sent to, let's say, my wife or my, my husband, I will send it to you immediately. Because I will go to the deep web and the dark web using the Tor browser and pull it for you. So now, please, there's nothing like secret on digital uh, uh, platforms. You think you have deleted it, but it's still on there. Because anything you post out in digital, we will pull it. We have training for that, and people have been received training and using it not for goodness, and they will use it for hacking and other stuff. So please, that is the warning for you. Things that mean so much, don't use your phones to do it because uh, ethical concerns. Digital divide is whereby you have some students that have access to tablets or remote devices. Others don't have. So there's a digital divide. That is not only a problem for Africans. Even if you go to the US, California, everywhere, they have digital divide. But they are taking steps to close it. So Ghana, what we have done is, again, our president, President Nana Adudankwa Kufuado, after we had a session, he believed that, okay, good, now we are in the digital age, so the digital divide is wide. Let me give every student from senior high school free tablets. So we just launched what we call the Ghana Smart School Project. In that project, every student from senior high school, one, two, three, you are going to be given a free tablet with all the content I spoke about already on it. So I don't mind some for you. So we hand over your tablet to you, we mention your name. Maybe Isa Mohammed, you take your tablet, you put it in your arm like this, you go. As soon as you go, everything you need to study is on the tablet. Because we have digitalized the content from the hard copy or the textbook and we have placed it on the tablet for you. So now you don't need anything. What you have to do is to come to the classroom and the teacher's classroom have smart boards and they will be working with them. Even on vacation or recess, they send assignment and the students will do it online. And we have forms of assessment, summative and formative assessment, all on there. So the digital divide in Ghana is closing because again, we have what we call leadership and presidential support. If you don't have that, it's also an issue. But our president, God be so good, has understand that he signed a document at a UN that I will provide SDG for. And when he came, he did access. So in Ghana, we have what we call the free senior high school. Nobody is paying for free a senior high school in Ghana. So that is for access. So after access, what do I do? And we went to talk to him that, Papa, you have to impute quality. He said, what do I do for quality? I said, okay, make sure we give tablets and other remote devices. Bingo, let's do it. Because I want education. Because guess what? If education fails, a country will fail. If anything can fail, but not education. So please, me, I am for education, so go and do it. And we are giving the student tablets. We will go to KG, but this is implemented for that. Later when we go to KG, every student will have tablets. And Ghana is the first country that have done that in Africa. Let's clap for that. <laughs> Teacher rules. So if you are implementing artificial intelligence, you don't want to take your teachers out. There are two fantastic stakeholders when it comes to artificial intelligence or electronic learning. That is students and teachers. What maybe if you don't take care, teachers will feel like, oh, AI is coming to take my work, so I don't have no role. For Ghana, we have stakeholders engagement with the teachers, and we have conducted training for them to know 
that you are still valuable in our classrooms. So forget about AI is coming and all these artificial intelligence. What AI is going to do will be some administrative, some marking, assessment, but some job you have to do it. So please, let's teach you how to deploy AI. But guess what? They are using it. And some teachers are giving good testimonials that this system that you brought, or you guys brought, is really, really helping us. Now I don't spend much time in preparing lesson notes. My lesson notes is prepared, deploying it here, so I can teach more. I can take more students and teach. And Ghana, things are moving in that direction. Next. So artificial intelligence, before you can do anything AI, you need what we call the policy. Europe has AI policy. I am hoping that it don't have to be only Ghana AI policy. It has to be Africa. But it was a gradual uh, process. So Ghana, we are working on an AI policy. In the policy, it will speak to all of these regulations and standards. So regulation on how to deploy AI and standards. It has to be basic. So every uh, government agency and every person in the educational sector will know the standard and the regulation. Ethical consideration should be also in the policy. Privacy and security, again, should be in there. As we are talking, we are moving students online. If you are a great student online, you should think about your privacy and security. There's a lot of things going on on there. So the next thing we will talk about that. Then governance and oversight. So there has to be governance in the educational sector to govern it. And in Ghana, we deploy projects using a phase approach and we trickle from national, then we get to regional before we go to district. And we give authority to the minister and other stakeholders to see what is going on. So it's sort of cascading effect. Though everyone monitors everyone. So that makes evaluation very easy for us and assessment. So that is what we're talking about in the policy lessons. So the iBox I spoke about is this device here. The iBox is made in Ghana. We did it here. We believe that education should be here and we should make sure we produce our own stuff and use it. It doesn't mean we don't get stuff from outside, but let's promote what is, belongs to Ghana. So the Minecraft education is also here. The iCampus, which you need internet, is here. And the Ghana Learning Passport, that one is in Nigeria. They have Nigeria Learning Passport. Ghana, we also have it here. It's a UNICEF-supported project. And uh, what's the name? Uh, Google and other people. What we are doing now is most of our intervention focuses at SHS, senior high school. So we are leveraging on the Ghana, Ibor, Ghana Learning Passport for the KG and other places to use that platform for them. So we are piloting it now to see if it's actually going to work. Then we expand it in the country called Ghana. Okay, for digital education, artificial intelligence to get to that height we are looking for, we realize that after our research, we will need some fantastic tools to do all that I'm talking about. So quickly, stakeholders came together, the minister led the charge, and they realized we need studios, content production studios. We need a TV station, we need a radio station solely for educational content. So teachers and students will be glued once they have educational content. We have the CEO court, any CEO leading any Ghanaian uh, educational agency, you will be brought to the TV station to speak to the people what you have done and what your area is doing to impact change in Ghana. We also have minister's time. The minister will meet with the people through that same TV station. We have STEM innovation, whereby we bring creativity in the case as an activity, hackathon competition. They come to the TV station and do it. We have open university section. So that time we talk to people about tertiary, how we want to do open university here in Ghana. And the radio station also support. All of them, we have almost like seven studios here and it's really supporting. We are creating sub studios in all the regions and the district. Yes. We also have service vans and an OB van and also a van that is a, a, a digital van. We take this van to the villages and guess what? Once we go to the remotest part, it's already set up. We have a computer base at the van behind it. One time I went to one of the remotest part. 
as we were driving, I saw this young boy at the age, how old was he? Nine years. And this boy came to the van, and as we were interacting with him, you could see he has the, inter the knowledge, digital knowledge. I pulled this boy, we set up the van. As soon as he came, just a basic education on how to log on on computers, you could see his skills coming out. So after the session, I called for him to be brought to Accra. As we speak, that guy, that little boy, is one of the best coders in Ghana now. Let's clap for the boy. He's through this going to the remotest part in the area to fish out talent. And we discovered him. And now he's going. So we don't leave nobody out. We have to make sure education is for everyone. So we use vans to go around at the TV station. All of them is a synergy supporting our charge to make sure we get education to everyone. Yes. All right, so this is a National Digital Distance Learning Conference. That is our minister here, that is myself, some students, UNESCO boss who has been transferred to Abuja now, Mr. Diallo, and uh, World Bank, all the stakeholders will come. The focus is very simple. When it comes to artificial intelligence in education, when it comes to digital education, you will see that even in Nigeria, in Ghana, in Mali, everywhere, you will see people are doing small intervention. When I got the position and the minister, we sat down, we had a meeting, that we need to bring everybody up together under one umbrella once a year. We have to do it. That one brings coordination and understand what people are doing. It was that time that you saw Ghana's education in terms of edtech really improving. Because a project UNESCO is doing, the same project USAID was doing, duplication of effort and waste of resources. So now under this conference, everybody comes, three days, they speak to what they are doing. Their successes, their failures, impact they have done, they speak to it. Their challenges, and the government is there. So the private sector, the public sector, the industry, academia, we all join and speak and see how we can support each other. Because where your project end, another person's project began from there. So we need to build that alignment, that ecosystem. And now that has boomed our educational sector, especially the ed tech, to that height that when you go to any place, now you go to Rwanda, you ask them which country is doing what ed tech, I'm sure they will mention Ghana. Please go to this. All right, so again, St. Louis Digital Education, these are some of the workshops we do. We go to places, and this one is gender mainstreaming and inclusivity. As we are speaking about artificial intelligence and edtech, tech, they are this minority that we are leaving them out. Girls. In Ghana, we conducted research, and we could see that most girls were not taking inclusiveness in what we are doing. So we did a gender mainstreaming, we produced a gender scorecard, and we did research and interviews. Why is girls not really participating on our movement to online? And it was most of them were being intimidated and sextortion, fishing, and other activities, so they don't want to be online. So we have done that with Commonwealth of Learning from Canada and other stakeholders for us to implement it well so most girls can get online. And guess what? Now girls and boys are at the same rate. They have confidence to also use digital education, and the AI has improved enrollment for girls now as we speak through the same gender mainstreaming inclusivity. Please, next. We have challenges in Ghana. All is not rosy. We can say everything is rosy. Even America, they have issues. Even Canada, everywhere. These are some of our issues. Internet connectivity is a problem. We have a deficit of 30% here. 100%, we only have 70% areas connected in Ghana. We are working to make sure everywhere will be connected. But still, we deploy on the offline iBox and also work stakeholders together to send connectivity. Elon Marx is coming to Ghana. Other people are coming. So I believe in the next six months, our connectivity issue will be resolved. It's very expensive, and we are working on that. Digital divide, yes, the president has given tablets. We still have a long way to go. Other people need to receive their tablet. Fidelity of assessment. Anything we are doing online using artificial intelligence, we still have some people born before, born before computers and born after computers. Those born before computers, they have different mindset. And those born after computer age have different mindset. 
So some people in the country, if you receive anything digital, online, AI based, they believe it's not weightier. The degree and things you do online using artificial intelligence is not weightier because their time, old old school, 1901, you have to go and sit in the classroom, right? <laughs> That's old, old time. You have to sit in the classroom, count mental, one, two, three, up to 20. Lashes you, do all that before you receive certificate. Now you sit in the comfort of your room, say you are using artificial intelligence, you become a doctor. Nobody will come to your clinic. So the fidelity of assessment, we are working on that. So guess what? We are putting a lot of robust assessment tools in place. So we will get the confidence of the people, so they will believe that degrees online, Artificial intelligence is equally good like what our forefathers or our old people got from their traditional classroom. Quality assurance mechanism, we are also doing that. ICT policy, we just launched a new ICT policy in Ghana. We do reforms. We reform to meet the new standard. So if there's a new thing coming, I know a, a, the chat GTP, uh, general, general, uh, AI is beginning, uh, another one is coming out. If we didn't capture that in our ICT policy, we have to reform it to capture it. So we do reforms in an interval, two years, four years. Once we do an assessment, stakeholders engagement, we all believe that the ICT policy we are using, we started using in 2002, it has gone under many reforms. So you don't keep the same document and expecting that it will work in 2024. We do reforms to capture the new things in technology. Training is very crucial. Everything that I've spoken about, training should be the baseline. If you don't train your teachers and all the actors in the space, you will not amount to nothing. So we do training, we go everywhere, we do hybrid training, we have big monitors, we bring people together in the closest hotels and other stuff, then we'll beam it live. Then once we have to go to them, we'll send people, but beaming it live, then we have what we call CISOs, ICT coordinators being at the hotel, teaching teachers and other staff. We don't leave parents out like Bangladesh did. They introduced ICT in education. They thought the role of parents is finished. So parents also sat down and the results was going down. So they did a research and say, hey, because we left parents out, we Ghana is an ecosystem. We have communication on our platform, teacher, 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 parent, teacher, student, parent, teachers. So everything we are doing, parents know what is going on. They have their own pace, they are put out to know what the award is doing. So we don't leave them out for us, so we train them. So in conclusion, the wave of technology is taking over. And you know that you can leave it. Somebody will say that technology, I don't need it. But you are making a crucial uh, uh, cardinal mistake. Because now we live in the world of technology. Ghana, we have seen it and we are not leaving nobody out. We want technology to help us solve the learning poverty. In the words of Nelson Mandela, he said, education is the greatest tool to use to build any nation. If he was alive now, he would say EdTech or artificial intelligence is the greatest tool to build any nation. Okay, Oliver Tambo also said that now you have to use education to invest in your people. Any country that does not leverage on education to invest in its people does not deserve its future. So Ghana, we are investing in our people to make sure everyone receives education, especially the modern education. So we believe all of us, but what we are thinking is Africa as a whole. We should all come together and accept technology because that is the way the surest bet in this fourth industrial revolution, 21st century. Thank you all. On behalf of the Commander, the National Institute for Security Studies, Allergy AS Delegate, FSI, Daga, MNI, the leader of the delegation, Director of Director of Coordination and Liaison Services, Mrs. E. E. Emilio Yele, the, the the faculty members, and distinguished participants, and indeed the NISS community, I wish to present this flag to you as a sign of uh, recognition and appreciation 
during this uh, our visit to this ministry, and uh, I hope you can find a place somewhere either in your office or at home, so you can remember meeting the NISS delegation like this. Thank you very much. Okay, on, on behalf of the Honorable Minister, uh, I would like to thank you. All that I will say is that we are highly humble. Yes, sir. Oh, yes, sir. Thank you. Yes, sir. On behalf of the Commandant of the and the distinguished participant and the entire NSS community. We have known that you are a scholar and a researcher. We have no, neither gold or silver to give you. We are giving you this book to further enrich your library. We know it will be useful to your further researches. And I as a memorial that we will say the NSS community and share your work and experience with us. We are very grateful. I will pray that whenever any of our team enters, we can again have it. Yeah.